What's going on guys? My name is Senior Asshat and welcome back. This is the top five things I love about the Hyundai Elantra GL 2012 edition. So if you guys haven't watched the previous top five things that I hate, make sure you click up here. I'll put a link you guys can check it out. So straight off the bat, I talked last time about the hate and this time the love. These are going to be things that I personally like. Uh, again, they may be trivial, something stupid, but again, it's it's my car. I gotta find things that I love, right? So the things I like first up is the stock sound system. The sound system in this car is amazing. It's not aftermarket, so you're obviously you're not gonna have a huge gigantic fucking uh, subwoofer in the back and a box banging out, right? Your, your car is not gonna be bouncing because the bass is so good. Um, it is adequate. It's nice. I'm glad I didn't have to put any extra money into it just to make it sound good. Um, I mean, I like, I like the, the speaker placement. So I'm going to show you guys. So speaker placement, speaker here and speakers up there, as well as down below right in here. And then of course in the back. So these ones right here actually give you, they're not very big. They're only probably about this big but they give you that nice sense of you're actually like in the music because where it curves, it pushes it out. And then of course it just hits the person here. And on my side, same thing right here. And there's one right down here. So, I mean, there, it's a nice sound system for like these little ones here that curve out and push the sound. And of course the, the sound in the back. Perfect. So sound system adequate. It's awesome. Good for stock. Um, plus it also comes with the dash. So this is the base, base system. So of course you have CD, it has XM radio. So if you have Sirius radio or anything like that, you can get it. It has Bluetooth enabled MP3 and disc naturally. Uh, the best thing is down here now, excuse the mess. It has an auxiliary port it has an iPod jack that I'm using for my Samsung because fuck Apple. That's why. And it also has two 12 volt spots. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. And I mean, really granted, you guys are gonna laugh at the color, but I'm a rebel, I don't care. You can get one of these that give you a USB spot. And there's also one down there, see? So I mean, it's, it's really cool that you can probably pop one of these in. Pissing now, guys, oh my lord. Anyway, it's really nice that there's a lot of opportunities for you to charge your equipment, Plug in a USB. You could actually get a USB port down in here, but there's a bunch of shit in here right now, so not gonna look at that. Um, and there's also one in the glove box as well. This car is riddled with places you can stick shit, and that's weird. That sounds weird coming from me, but that's fine. Um, overall, great sound system. Lots of places you can put your own music into it. It's just an awesome part of the car that I really enjoyed. Next up, heated seats. Oh my God. All right, so I don't know if this is on all models. This is the base model, I'm pretty sure. There's nothing fantastic about it. You can get the one with like the leather interior and all that stuff, but no, I don't do that. Uh, fat people stick to leather and hairy people as well. So fat and hairy people don't go well. Let's put it that way. Heated seats in Canada's winters are a blessing. Eight o'clock in the morning, it could be like negative 10 degrees. You come in your car, you're sitting there freezing and you just pop on the heat seats and literally probably within a minute, minute and a half, your back and ass is already warmed up. So amazing job with heated seats. Uh, I think all cars should be outfitted with these now. Um, they're just, they're just so good. You can't not have them. All right, next up, dual transmission, AKA clutchless shifting. Um, this is an automatic. I don't know how to drive a manual. Funny enough, I know how to drive a manual motorcycle. Not the same. Um, but this car does have the dual shift, the plus and the minus. I love that feature because I can control what gear I'm in, what power I'm giving, and basically how I can control my throttle response. Of course, lower gears, better throttle response. As you get higher, not so much. I tested it around the city, just shifting myself, and then... Like I'll go down, shift myself. I'm normally third, fourth, depending in the city. Cause I mean, there's no need to be in fifth and sixth in the city. There's no point. And first and second really just kind of right? So um, third and fourth, when I check, 
Like I'd go down to the store, come back, and I'd let the car do it, and then I'd just quickly slam it over just to kind of see where they're sitting. They're sitting in fifth and sixth. Again, I don't really see the need of that. I shift around 2,500, 3,000 RPM, and I think it gets the best response. Now, with the car itself, I mean, if you're in fifth and sixth, I mean, it's constantly at about 1,500 RPM. I mean, yes, less rotations per minute, but does that really drain your gas? I don't know. I don't know too much about cars. Uh, so if you guys know that answer, put it down below. I'd love to hear it. Um, but I just love it that I can control it. And when I need to get around somebody, instead of just slamming my foot to the floor and hoping the automatic transmission goes, oh, and takes me off, I can literally kick down. Like if I'm in fifth, I'll kick it down to fourth, give it some gas, and then I'm gone. Like this car's power is amazing. It's great. And that actually leads me into my next point. So yeah, my next point, power in low gears and high RPM. Now, with this car, there's not a lot of power when you're doing automatic, like automatic uh, shifting. Because I mean, you can stomp your foot to the ground. It's like, hmm, oh, okay, you want me to go and then takes off. There's that hesitation that if you needed to get away very quickly, you can't unless you're shifting yourself. Because again, I kick it down, boom, I'm gone, right? Um, but the power in the low gears, like the first and second and third gear, there is a lot once you get up to that 3,000 RPM. Everything before that's kind of eh. But once you hit 3,000, the car, yes, winds a little bit, but that's where your power band is. That's where the car goes, okay, giddy up and go. So... That's why I prefer doing the manual shifting. And there's actually been some times that I, I kick it and drive by accident. And then me just being so natural, I kick it up in a neutral. I'm like, hit 6,000 RPM. I'm like, ooh, okay. I'm just going to put that back down. I, I know that's bad for the car and I, I don't do it. It's all in my brain. I'm used to shifting. This is my first car. I'm used to having a bike where I have to shift myself. Otherwise, I'm not going anywhere. Um, but yeah, I just, I really enjoy the clutchless shifting. It's the best of both worlds. I want a manual. Serena wants an automatic because she doesn't like the clutch. It intimidates her, which it should. It's intimidating at first. Um, but yeah, that's really the big part of the power band. And I really enjoy that with the Elantra. And my final piece is storage. Believe it or not, for a four-door sedan style, there is a lot of room. Like, you have storage space everywhere. And the trunk... I might get some weird looks for this, but you could probably put two bodies in there. It's not bad. If it wasn't raining, I'd probably crawl in there myself just to show you. I'm not going to do that, though. I was actually thinking, but it's raining out, so fuck it. Um, yeah, like the trunk space is pretty big, actually. Like bigger than I thought it was going to be. And just the space up here, no one is crunched. Whether I have my friends who are bigger than me in the back, and I have straight up front, or I have taller friends, everyone has enough room. And I could feel that if we were going on a long trip, we could put maybe a tent in the back. We could put maybe a tote or two in the back. Uh, like, like the totes or whatever, you put it in the trunk. There is a, quite a bit of space. You guys should check it out. It's pretty good. Um, so those are the top five things that I love about this car. Is there more? Probably. But those are the big things to me that I really enjoyed. Um, everything else is adequate substandard subpar it's all irrelevant really it all depends on what you enjoy i didn't pop the hood look under the engine because really i know dick spit about it. you guys would probably just laugh at me it is what it is everyone has their own level of knowledge so guys i hope you guys enjoyed my top five things i love and hate about my 2012 high end elantra gl remember stands for good luck and uh stay tuned for the future because we're gonna have some more awesome footage coming it may not be in this car. It may be in a new car. Who knows? Anyway, guys, my name is Senior Ass Hat, signing off. Make sure you guys subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.